want to begin my talk by saying that you and the other men in the organization that are helping to build our business furnish the inspiration I need to carry on my part of the IBM work. Without your inspiration and help, your cooperation and support, it would be impossible for me to accomplish anything. Our company has established in the business world a reputation of which we are all very proud. Sometimes the head's executive's names are mentioned in the comments made about the success of the company, but we never fail to remember the other men in the organization. We know it's not the executives in New York, nor the heads at the different factories, nor the heads of the different divisions who have made the great success, which is the IBM. It is the combined effort of all the men in all of the organizations that has made this company of ours the success it is today. Sometimes I think we overemphasize the mechanics of this age. Often we lay too much stress on the machinery of production. When we start thinking of men as automatons, clicking their respective ways through the processes of life with mechanical exactness, that day we lose our own identity. We become automatons ourselves. When we cease to realize the interdependence of men, we are on the brink of failure. When a man comes into this business, no matter what his capacity, the job of being president is accessible to him as is the next job above him. That man in this business that does not recognize outstanding ability on the part of a man under him who fails to give that ability an opportunity to express itself in greater responsibility and better work is of no further use to us. And our executives know that. They are constantly looking for men. They know that it is human ability above all else that will help this company succeed. Our general manager of manufacturing started at an assembly bench. Our vice president in charge of sales began with a sample case. The secretary of this company came here as a clerk. We do not have to go outside our own company to get top notchers. We develop them. Developing and keeping men is one of the biggest jobs the heads of American business have. Our modern organizations are so complex and our establishments so departmentalized that it is easy to lose contact with the very essence of business, those men who operate and maintain it. Around the room today, we have large squares of cardboard and each contain a maxim. I shall take them up one at a time and devote my talk to them. They sum up in a very condensed fashion the techniques of doing a business successfully. 